so yes hello everyone so yes am i audible is the screen clear so well, so that we can start the session this is the anatomy of the pectoral region so i would like to cover up the important muscles in this region mm, okay yes i am audible everything is clear so we can start the session now i was just checking it so in this session i am going to cover up the pectoral region muscles and uh, this is targeted for the first year mbbs students so i will go concept wise and i will be explaining each and every aspect related to this uh, pectoral muscles and clavi pectoral fascia the first thing is that so let me come up the topic before that meanwhile the aspirants will be joining so i would like to tell about myself and about the platform of fun academy so myself dr mona lisa i have done my md anatomy from arm force medical college pune and if i talk about the special classes and uh, it's an interactive live session where the learners and the educators can interact among themselves polls are conducted among the learners which is highly beneficial for them raise your hands get your doubts clear write itself when the session is going on and also i would like to tell that if you start following uh, if you start following uh, the educators on the anacademy platform you are not going to miss any of the sessions taken by that educator this is another point which is very beneficial for you never ever miss a session what does that mean that means that if you uh, want to not miss any of the session of the um, educator you will get notification regarding all the sessions once the session is finished you can also download the pdf notes anytime anywhere read from the top educators of anacademy platform and use this code and add 10 to get enroll for the free test of anacademy platform after downloading the anacademy app you will get the link of all free session provided in the let's crack neat pg group or telegram group in the future doctor telegram group and also all the group of anacademy related to the medical field so i would also like to give you information about my free special classes which is going to be taken by me so of high yield anatomy mcq session uh, targeting for the neat pg 22 examination so i am going to take this session on sunday 30th january that is 1 pm and 2 pm will be the timing in the afternoon so you can be the part of this session this will be highly highly beneficial for you so you can use the code and add 10 to get 10% discount if you want to take the subscription and you can use this also as an unlock code if you are watching the session for the first time so yes d kartik hello hello i would also like to uh, show you this free test calendar targeted for medical pg examination get enroll for this test by using the code anat10 now i would also like to uh, tell you about the benefits of joining plus course yeah so when i am talking about the plus course all 19 subjects will be completed in a very very systematic way you are not going to miss any of the sessions of the plus course and also these plus courses are always taken by the top educators of anacademy platform you can compete in live test and quizzes you can study on the device of your choice you can assess more than 25000 mcqs clinical mcqs of all 19 subject which will provide you with a better rank in the competitive exam and you are also getting uh, the printed notes of anacademy if you are going to take the subscription of one year or more i would also like to tell you about the benefits of taking the iconic subscription when i am talking about iconic subscription it means you are getting the benefits of best two platform for targeting your dream rank in the neat pg examination that is an academy and the prep ladder that means all the benefits of the prep ladder that is clinical integrated essentials video lectures of the dream team q bank 3 rapid revision snapshot center as a dream notes of the prep ladder so both of these benefits are merged together so that you can get a better rank in the competitive exam you can also use my code for acquiring 10% extra discount that is an at 10 congratulations to the toppers of fmg december session 2021 i am very very glad and very happy to share their images with you and i congratulate them that they should uh, get through their neat pg exam with a good uh, rank in the first attempt I would also like to show uh, the uh, pricing detail of Plus and Iconic, where you can compare the pricing detail. You can use my code for ten percent discount. I would also like to give you information about highly effective Q Bank, highly updated. Twenty five thousand MCQs are there on the platform of Anacademy Plus platform, based on latest pattern of examination, and it is also having a detailed explanation given to each and every MCQs by the top educators of Anacademy platform. So use this code and add ten and get it. extra discount of 10% now my dear aspirants republic day special offer is going on 
okay what is that offer the offer is that six month free extension so if you are going to take the subscription of one year or more you are getting six month of extra extension free extension of plus course of an academy and this is highly beneficial and by using my code and add 10 an extra discount of 10 percent so these two benefits can be added on just go for it today is the last day to take the subscription that is six month of free extension will be provided to you now before starting the session i just want to uh, tell you about the batch courses which is included one is the focus fmg batch um, comprehensive batch of uh, uh, of 2022 and the other is target need pg 22 mcq batch these two batches are right now going on on the platform of unacademy so just grab this opportunity in taking the subscription of unacademy now you can use my code and add 10 for an extra 10 percent discount now let's start with the session now before starting the session i would to I want to continue the sessions and the entire anatomy on this future doctor according to the new pattern which is followed in the medical colleges. So number of competency which can be achieved by you. So according to the new curriculum, we have to achieve all the competen uh, competency which is uh, required by that topic. So agar hum pectoral reason padte So if we are going with the pectoral reason, we are going to achieve the three competency. The three competencies can be achieved by you by knowing the attachment nerve supply and action of pectoralis major minor also by demonstrating the action and origin uh, insertion of serratus anterior muscle nerve supply and clinical anatomy clavi pectoral fascia attachments and structures piercing okay dr karthik so let's start with it so before starting the muscles just an introduction about the cutaneous innovation of the pectoral reason so if we talk about the pectoral reason cutaneous innovation it is getting innovations from following nerves so first you can see a horizontal line is formed this horizontal line which is formed is actually at the level of sternal angle so actually a horizontal line is formed at the level of sternal angle and the area above that sternal angle is getting innovation from supraclavicular nerve supraclavicular nerve and we know that supraclavicular nerve is having the root value c3 and c4 okay when we are talking about the area of the skin which is lying below the level of this is at the level of sternal angle which is corresponding to the level of t 4 to uh, which is exactly at the junction of manubrium sternum which is at the junction of manubrium and the body of sternum so this is and below this the area is getting innovations from is getting innovation from the anterior and cute anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of the second to sixth intercostal nerve second to sixth intercostal nerve so don't worry i will write it uh, also and uh, the area actually uh, this is all about and we can also see the area which is supplied by the c4a uh, reason as you can see c4 cervical nerve spinal segment directly meets with the area getting supplied by the t2 spinal segment so these two nerves are uh, uh, these two nerves are uh, lying close to each other and these are the basic cutaneous innovation of the pectoral reason and also we can see that uh, the spine uh, the nerves from c5 to that of t1 is contributed for innovation of upper limb forming brachial plexus so let me write it uh, in brief cutaneous innovation so let me write few important points which is important for you to know about cutaneous innovations so pectoral reason we are talking about the cutaneous innovation of pectoral reason and basically the cutaneous nerve which is giving innovation to pectoral reason so skin above the skin above the horizontal line which is drawn at the level of sternal angle is supplied by just now we have seen in the image it is supplied by which nerve it is supplied by c3 and c4 basically it is supplied by supraclavicular nerve supraclavicular nerves having the root value c3 and c4 now the skin below the horizontal line is basically supplied by anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of second to sixth intercostal nerves intercostal nerves this also we have seen in the diagram now 
and if we talk about uh, the spinal segment so actually the spinal segment from c5 to t1 when we will study one of the important topic of uh, upper limb that is called as brachial plexus bp for brachial plexus so this takes uh, for brachial plexus the ventral rami of c5 to t1 the ventral rami of c5 to t1 will lead to the formation of brachial plexus and this will innervate the upper limb so let's talk about the muscles so in uh, so let's start with the muscles of the pectoral region my dear aspens i just want you to tell so yeah so yes anyone if you are not under understanding anything you can ask me so my dear aspens i just want to tell one thing that uh, in case uh, in the region of pectoral region we have got pectoralis major muscle the most superficial muscle when we dissect out the pectoralis major muscle inside we have got the pectoralis minor muscle which is called as the key muscle of axillary region and just below the clavicle we have got subclavius muscle so these are exactly the pectoral region muscle but also serratus anterior muscle will be uh, studied in this category why because of its ease of location and convenience of explanation so these four muscle i will explain you and then i will proceed with the clavipectoral fascia so let's study firstly the pectoralis major muscle so if we talk about pectoralis major muscle it is a it is a fan shaped muscle and it is having two heads of origin pectoralis major means it is a the if we consider two muscles in the pectoral region we have got pectoralis minor and major so the larger one will be the major and below if we dissect out the pectoralis major muscle inside pectoralis major muscle we will have pectoralis minor muscle so yahan pe pectoralis major muscle ka shape hai it is more thin it is more flat it is fan shaped and if you remember the class of morphology of muscle fiber the morphology of pectoralis major muscle is how it is arranged the morphological aspect of pectoralis major muscle is it is an example of spiral or twisted muscle because it is having a broad origin and it is twisted at the level of insertion the pectoralis major muscle has got two heads of origin so firstly let me explain via diagram and then i will write the literature part don't worry about this so let me just enlarge this diagram so okay i'm just enlarging this diagram so is it clear okay so i have slightly enlarged this diagram so here i just want to explain the whole of its origin and insertion so this bone which you are seeing is the clavicle is it clear this is the clavicle bone okay and this is the manubrium part of the sternum this is the body of the sternum and here we have got the ziphoid process so this is the sternum bone and the clavicle bone so as i told you uh, the pectoralis major muscle has got two heads of origin the pectoralis major muscle has got two heads of origin one is clavicular and other is the sternal head so here if you will see pectoralis major muscle is originating from so this is which part of the clavicle this is medial part of the clavicle so it is originating from the medial half of the anterior aspect of the clavicle as you can see here okay and also from the sternum so also it is originating from the sternum to be more specific lateral half of the anterior aspect of the sternum so it is also originating from the sternum lateral aspect of the anterior half of the sternum few fibers is also few fibers of origin also come from downwards that is external oblique muscle basically it is having two heads of origin one is the clavicular part so here in this diagram you can clearly see two heads of origin this is the sternal head this is the sternal part and this part is the clavicular clavicular part of the pectoralis major muscle so it is having a wide origin at and the insertion point you can see it is uh, more narrow and it is inserting at which bone so which bone is this this is the humerus bone so it is inserting on which part of the humerus bone it is inserting on to the lateral lip of intertubercular sulcus of humerus bone got it so this is about origin insertion of pectoralis major muscle so write it so right on pectoralis major muscle have two heads of origin it is having two heads of origin first head is clavicular head clavicular head the clavicular head as we have seen in the diagram it is originating from medial half 
of the clavicle anterior aspect of the medial half of anterior aspect of the clavicle anterior aspect of clavicle <coughs> also we have seen the second head that is the sternal head the sternal head of pectoralis major muscle it is originating from lateral half of anterior surface of sternum of anterior surface of sternum up to the level of sixth costal cartilage up to the level of sixth costal cartilage attachment so basically these are the major origin the clavicular head we have got these as the two major origin of the pectoralis major muscle that is the clavicular head and the sternal head other than that i would also like to add on one more point about the origin it also takes uh, uh, origin from the aponeurosis of external oblique muscles so it also take origin from aponeurosis of external oblique muscle so got it so we have got these are the three origin point about the pectoralis major muscle let's move on on the insertion point so let's talk about the insertion point so when we are talking about the insertion of pectoralis major muscle when it is inserting it has become narrow as we have seen also in the diagram it has become narrowed out at the insertion point and it insertion will be in the u shape bilamellar tendon so actually what happens it's uh, so its anterior lamina of the muscle is formed by clavicular fiber so anterior lamina it is having two laminas at the insertion point anterior lamellae of pectoralis major muscle is formed by clavicular part and posterior lamina of insertion point at the level of insertion point is formed by the sternocostal fibers now one more thing is important actually when it is inserting when we are talking about the sternal fibers and we have seen the inferior most origin is from the aponeurosis of which muscle it is also originating from the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle so these fibers when they are inserting at the in, at the lateral leap of intertubercular sulcus there will be twisting so only pectoralis major muscle is an example of twisted or the spiral fiber so at that level the lower sternocostal fibers are twisted in that manner that the lowest fibers will become the highest fibers okay so at the insertion point if you will see if we talk about the sternal fibers at the insertion point the part of the fibers which is coming lower down for example eo i have written here so that part at the insertion point at the level of intertubercular sulcus will be lying above in comparison to the other fibers of sternocostal muscle so this is what happens so now where it is inserted so the fibers are inserted in the lateral lip of or lateral lip of intertubercular sulcus intertubercular sulcus so yes we have done with origin and insertion next is what is the nerve supply and action so let's talk about the nerve supply and then we will talk about the action so yes if we are talking about uh, the nerve supply the nerve supply is by both medial and lateral pectoral nerve so it is having innervation by it is getting a uh, nerve supply by both median pectoral nerve and via lateral pectoral nerve so both median and lateral pectoral nerves are giving innervation to pectoralis major muscle so that means pectoralis major muscle is which type of muscle if you remember in the general anatomy i have talked about this point so just now we have seen that it is getting innervation from both medial and lateral pectoral nerve that means this is an example of composite muscle it's an example of composite muscle having innervation from two nerves that is medial and lateral pectoral nerve now let's talk about pectoralis major muscle action before that i would also like to show you this cadaveric image so let's talk about the action and then we will move on with the discussion of this cadaveric image 
So firstly, let's talk about the action of pectoralis major muscle. So for understanding the action of pectoralis major muscle, first thing is that it is important to know that it is having two heads, clavicular head and that of sternal head. So we will uh, know the action, uh, both of these actions. So when I am talking about clavicular head of pectoralis major muscle, the clavicular head of pectoralis major muscle is causing, the major action is it causes flexion of arm. Now, this is, and when we are talking about sternocostal part of pectoralis major muscle, it is causing two actions of the arm, that is medial rotation and adduction of arm. So, it causes adduction and medial rotation of arm. So, done. Is it okay? So for muscles, whenever you uh, read the important muscles, it is important that you should have an idea of origin, insertion, nerve supply and action. Now, okay, so let's see. So uh, your uh, first year will be also with the uh, uh, dissection part. So let me enlarge this. I have included this diagram. This is the diagram. So in cadaveric image of uh, pectoralis major muscle, the first thing what happens when you want to see the pectoralis major muscle, the first thing is that you will go with this section of the skin superficial fascia and then you will remove the deep fascia and then you will get the muscles. So here the highlighted muscles which is shown in this cadaveric image is the pectoralis major muscle. So here you can clearly see this is the clavicular head. This is the clavicular head of pectoralis major muscle. This is the these these are the sternocostal head. These are what? Sternocostal head. Now, you can see here, after its origin, so the fibers are twisted. So only, in if you remember the class of my morphological uh, classification of muscles, I have included pectoralis major as an example of spiral or twisted fiber. So you can see it is having a wide area of origin from clavicle and that of sternum. But at the insertion point, it is narrowed out and it is inserting here. It is inserting here. The insertion point is it is inserting into bicipital groove that is also called as intertubercular groove. So intertubercular groove which lip lateral lip. So this is how you have to identify the most superficial muscle, the broad flattened twisted muscle in the pectoral region. So after seeing the pectoralis major muscle and studying the pectoralis major muscle, we will remove the pectoralis major muscle and then we'll move uh, inside to see the pectoralis minor muscle. Before moving to the next topic, I just want to tell you about one more muscle. So my dear aspirants, so actually uh, I want to explain this why because sometimes in the uh, when you will go for the dissection and you will find out the muscle and you will dissect out and then you will understand the muscles location action nerve supply origin insertion the basic point of dissecting is to understand the location its origin and insertion. So uh, there is occasionally a, uh, when you will go for dissection for example in your medical college there are uh, 15, 20, 10, uh, 5, 7 uh, cadavers. Okay. So, in that one cadaver or two cadavers, so generally uh, in few of the cadavers at times, uh, if you, for example, if there is 12 cadavers for your whole batch, in one of the cadaver, it can be possible that you will get occasionally a vertical seat of muscle which is lying superficial to pectoralis major muscle and this seat of muscle is called rectus sternalis muscle. So, see here. Let me show you. So here again you can see this is the clavicle, this is the sternum, okay this hole is the sternum. So here you can clearly see that this muscle which you are seeing here, this muscle which you are seeing here is the pectoralis major muscle which we have already discussed. Now superficial to it, superficial to it you can see a small slip of muscle is running, okay can you see here a small slip of muscle is running. So this small slip of muscle which is running superficial to pectoralis major muscle, this slip of muscle is called as, can anybody tell me this slip of muscle is called as rectus sternalis muscle. This muscle is called as 
rectus sternalis muscle so here in anatomy so rectus the word rectus means straight the word rectus means straight so here you can absolutely see that this muscle is having straight uh, uh, it is straight and it is running superficially to pectoralis major muscle and it is actually uh, uh, it is actually uh, when you will see it is lying more superficial to the medial it is lying more superficial and to the medial aspect of pectoralis major muscle so this is one thing so let me so is it okay so what do you mean by rec, uh, rectus sterni in few of cadavers in few cadavers at times there can be the presence of there can be the presence of not in all cases rectus sternalis muscle location of rectus sternalis muscle is location of rectus sternalis muscle is superficial to medial part of pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major muscle is it clear to everyone is it clear are you understanding let me know okay now i would like to show you a cadaveric image for this so let me again highlight this so here you can see this is the outline of this is again the out uh, this is the muscle which is shown this is the pe uh, pectoralis major muscle and just superficial to it this muscle which is running so if i talk about this muscle which is running superficial to rectus uh, superficial to pectoralis major muscle this is called as rectus sternalis muscle rectus sternalis muscle so everyone have you understood rectus sternalis muscle this is a muscle which is present in few of the cadavers and in few dissection you can get it which is lying superficial to pectoralis major muscle medial part now so we have done with this other clinical aspect which is related to the topic of pectoralis major muscle is at times what happens there will be a part of sternocostal fibers missing in case of pectoralis major muscle and in that category of uh, individual the adduction and medial rotation of arm will be weakened okay this is another clinical aspect related to the topic at times there can be absence of which fibers of pectoralis major muscle sternocostal fibers and at that time we know that sternocostal muscle fibers just now i have told you that sternocostal muscle fibers what is the action it is required for medial rotation and adduction of arm so when these fibers are missing or a part of these fibers are missing there will be weakness of adduction and medial rotation of arm is it clear let's move on to the next that is pectoralis minor muscle so when we are talking about pectoralis minor muscle it is a small triangular muscle lying deep to pectoralis major muscle it is a small triangular muscle in outline lying deep to pectoralis major muscle that means when you are going to dissect pectoralis major muscle you have to retract you have to retract you have to not fully uh, remove it you can retract the pectoralis major muscle to see the small underlying muscle that is pectoralis minor muscle again other important point about pectoralis minor muscle is that this is considered to be the key muscle of axilla so the reason is why it is considered to be the key muscle of axilla because axillary artery is divided into three parts axillary artery is divided into three parts by this key muscle by this key muscle that is by this key muscle that is pectoralis minor muscle into three parts that is uh, first second and third part first part is lying superior to pectoralis minor muscle of axillary artery the second part of axillary artery will lie deep to pectoralis minor muscle and third part of axillary artery will lie inferior to pectoralis minor muscle so let's uh, this show you the diagram for origin and insertion and then i will write it also don't worry so again i would like to slightly enlarge this diagram so a clear view is there okay so let me explain you pectoralis minor muscle so here you can see this is the first rib this is second rib so this is what this is the third rib this is the fourth rib and this is the fifth rib got it 
first second third fourth and fifth now my dear aspirants what you can appreciate that this is actually what we know that the rib anterior part is cartilaginous we know that in case of rib the anterior part of the rib is cartilaginous so at the junction of this point what is this so you can say at the junction of cartilage and that of the bony part of the rib is called as uh it, it what is it called as it is called as near the costal cartilage from which rib from the third fourth and fifth rib there is origin of pectoralis minor muscle and it is inserting to this part what is this this is coracoid process of scapula this is coracoid process of scapula so you can understand pectoralis minor muscle originating from the junction costochondral junction of third fourth and fifth rib so costochondral junction of third fourth fifth rib and inserting at the coracoid process of scapula so please let me know is it clear are you understanding any doubt you can ask me so write it pectoralis minor muscle origin it originates from third fourth and that of fifth rib near the costal cartilage near the costal cartilage okay insertion insertion is by short thick tendon so it will form thick tendon and it will insert on to the medial border and upper surface of coracoid process of scapula coracoid process of scapula so got it so we have done with the origin insertion of pectoralis minor what remains the next point is to know so by seeing this diagram it's quite clear about the origin insertion of pectoralis minor let's talk about the nerve supply and the action so let's move with the nerve supply and the action nerve supply so today i will explain the diagram with the help of uh, um, uh, diagrams i will explain the origin insertion and i will also show you the cadaveric images for each and every muscle don't worry about this nerve supply so when we are talking about nerve supply it is again the example of composite or hybrid muscle why because it is getting innervation from two nerves so it is again an example of hybrid muscle why because it is getting again innervation from both medial pectoral nerve and lateral pectoral nerve so we lateral pectoral nerve so please don't get worried that ye medial and pectoral nerve and lateral pectoral nerve is source of which part of brachial plexus because in the consecutive sessions i will also take the brachial plexus and the other topics so you will know that actually medial pectoral nerve is a branch of medial cord of brachial plexus lateral pectoral nerve is a branch of lateral cord of brachial plexus so we have done with this now next topic is to know the action of pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis minor muscle action so if i talk about the action of pectoralis minor muscle okay so any doubt you can ask me also my dear aspirants any doubt you can ask me i'm just checking your messages also don't worry any doubt if you have got any doubt you can ask me if you and you want to repeat anything you just let me know so action is actually this pectoralis minor muscle the key muscle of the axillary region it is assist it is assisting the serratus anterior muscle in drawing the scapula forward it draw the scapula forward so what it is causing it is drawing the scapula forward so uh, actually serratus anterior muscle is also drawing the scapula forward that action is called as protraction or punching action so pectoralis minor muscle is not the major protractor or the punching punching action but it is assisting serratus anterior muscle in this action so first action will be it assist the serratus anterior muscle it assists the serratus anterior muscle in drawing the scapula in drawing the scapula forward that means which action protraction when the when the scapula is pulled forward that is called as protraction action the second action is the second action is 
it also depresses the point of shoulder it also causes depression of point of the shoulder the third action is pectoralis minor muscle is one of the accessory muscle of respiration so it is also considered to be uh, accessory muscle of accessory muscle of accessory muscle of respiration okay that it is active in forced inspiration it is active in forced inspiration so done with this now now i would like to show you the key uh, muscle of the axillary region in the cadaveric image so let me again uh, enlarge this diagram so my dear aspirants abhi kya hai one superficial in this diagram again the superficial muscle of the pectoral region what is it the pectoralis major muscle has been removed out which muscle was over uh, which which muscle was covering it the pectoralis major muscle was covering it and when we are going in the dissection we remove the pectoralis major muscle in this cadaver the pectoralis major muscle has been removed so that you can have a better understanding of pectoralis minor muscle but when we will go in dissection we will just retract pectoralis major muscle and then also you can visualize very nicely the pectoralis minor muscle so in this diagram cadaveric image we are seeing pectoralis minor muscle you can appreciate um, the three slips of origin of pectoralis minor muscle third fourth and fifth rib these are third fourth and fifth rib and from the costochondral junction and it is inserting on this point what is this coracoid process of scapula so is it clear my dear aspirants is the origin and the insertion clear to everyone priyansu please ma'am osteologic basic structure on upcoming week so that we can start the osteology uh mainly ma'am osteologic basic structure yeah sure priyansu what i uh, i can understand that uh, you must be not feeling good that ma'am is not taking that session what happens no uh, that uh, that schedule of one week is prior made okay schedule of uh, your upcoming session is prior made okay so that is the point that till uh, 31st of january the schedule is already made so i am not uh, changing that because that will require some of the changements to be done so in the first week of feb only i will be able to do so please don't uh, mind uh, it priyansu i i totally understand that you want a basic class of osteology part and i will definitely fulfill that okay is it okay priyanshu i can understand that basis of osteology is very important actually osteology part i love to teach osteology but the thing is that if we go uh, i will also uh, try to make you understand the good images i will use and i will make you understand the osteology part or we can have a session also there so don't worry i yes sure sure it is a promise priyanshu okay sure dear okay so are you understanding these muscles okay don't worry it will be completed so done now let's talk about one another muscle that is sub let's talk about the third important muscle of the pectoral region that is subclavius muscle subclavius muscle is a very small muscle and actually what happens when the students of first year when i am also in the dissection hall or jab maybe dissection when i also do the dissection so sometimes what happens if the uh, uh, we are going so uh, quickly with the dissection so at times we can injure the uh, subclavius muscle it's a very small muscle and you have to see the inferior aspect of the clavicle there is a subclavian groove there you can see the small piece of muscle that is called as subclavius muscle so you have to do the dissection slowly take your time do a neat dissection to visualize the subclavius muscle okay but after having the theory knowledge of the muscles location if you proceed for the dissection in your dissection hall it will be very clear your concepts will be clear and you will enjoy the dissection part so subclavius muscle so it's a small muscle and it lies horizontally inferior it is exactly located horizontally inferior to the clavicle 
So actually when we will go with the clavicle osteology part, in the clavicle inferior aspect we will have a subclavian groove in which this muscle is inserted. Okay, so origin, origin, it arises. Okay, let me firstly explain and then I will write it. Okay, so see this diagram. So here you can see if I just enlarge this diagram. So here you can clearly see this bony structure which you are seeing is the subclavius muscle. Okay, so this is the sternal end of clavicle and this is the acromial or lateral end of clavicle of the clavicle this bone is the clavicle and on inferior aspect this small muscle which you are seeing is the subclavius muscle so actually to be more specific this is the manubrium sterni this is m for manubrium sterni this is the body of the sternum and this is the ziphoid process of the sternum so exactly if you see its origin it is originating from first rib it is originating from which rib first rib which rib first rib so it is originating from the first rib and inserting onto the inferior aspect of the clavicle where it is inserting it is inserting into the inferior aspect of the clavicle so got it i have included another diagram also subclavus so yes there is one more beautiful diagram so here just concentrate so let's move on this okay see here here you can understand i think this will help you to understand better this is the sternal end of the clavicle this is the clavicular end of the clavicle this is the clavicle bone and this is the costochondral junction for the first rib this is the first rib so origin origin is from the first rib and insertion is into the inferior aspect of the clavicle insertion where insertion of this muscle is in the inferior aspect of the clavicle in the subclavian group is it okay? The diagram is clearly showing you origin and insertion of subclavius muscle. So let's proceed the same thing. I will write it for you so that you can revise it afterwards also. Okay, so write on. Subclavius muscle origin. Origin, it arises. It arises from first rib at costochondral junction so it arises at the level of costochondral junction got it insertion if i talk about insertion where it is inserting it inserts into subclavian groove it inserts into subclavian groove it inserts into subclavian groove on the inferior surface of clavicle to be more specific inferior middle part of the inferior aspect of the clavicle so we have done with origin and insertion next important point is to know the nerve supply and the action of subclavius muscle so let's proceed nerve supply so it's very easy to remember the nerve supply actually if you are knowing the name of the muscle the nerve supply is known what is the name of the muscle subclavis muscle and its nerve supply will be nerve to subclavis muscle so write down nerve supply is by nerve to subclavis muscle nerve to subclavis muscle actually nerve to subclavis muscle is a branch from the upper trunk of brachial plexus so not we are not going into that part because brachial plexus is a separate topic which will be taken by me don't worry about that and exactly action so if i am talking about the action of the muscle so its action is it is acting as a stabilizing factor uh, adhar bangli good evening good evening dear adhar so its action is it stabilizes it stabilizes the clavicle by pulling it inferiorly and medially so we can we have seen also the subclavius muscle is located and uh, its location is on inferior subclavian groove of the clavicle and its origin is from the medial aspect that is the rib so it is pulling the clavicle medially and inferiorly so that means it is stabilizing the clavicle during shoulder movement the action is it is stabilizing the clavicle during movements of shoulder 
so let's talk about so before that i would like to show you this diagram so again we have already talked about this um, origin insertion of subclavius muscle so here it is important that before going into dissection so first thing is that you have an idea of this subclavius muscle this small muscle which is on the inferior aspect this is the subclavius muscle as you can see this is the subclavius muscle which is as you can see arising from the first rib costochondral junction and it is inserting into the subclavian groove of the clavicle now compare this diagram now see here this is the dissection which has been done and in this dissected part also you can see what i told you if you go uh, uh, quickly with the dissection and you don't pay attention to the inferior aspect of the clavicle at times uh, now when we also uh, demonstrate the dissection and the students do the dissection themselves they will not find the uh, subclavius muscle so just inferior to just inferior this slip of the muscle which you are seeing is the subclavius muscle this is subclavius muscle got it this part which you are seeing is the cut part of pectoralis minor muscle so done okay let's move on to the next that is let's move on to the next that is serratus anterior muscle so to be more specific when i was starting uh, the session also i told you serratus anterior muscle if i go with more detail it is actually not exactly the muscle which is located in the pectoral region but when we are dissecting the pectoral region we can see the serratus muscle fibers on the uh, lateral aspect of the pectoral region so we will study here itself the serratus anterior muscle because it's a uh, it's uh, easy for the explanation and by the convenience process we will study serratus anterior muscle under pectoral region so serratus anterior muscle again uh, uh, it is a broad muscle which is having uh, digitations of origin okay it is having eight to nine digitations of origin and it is clothing the sides of the axilla okay so it is forming a boundary for the axilla serratus anterior muscle is a broad sheet of muscle which is clothing the or forming the boundary you can say it forms the boundary of axilla so you can say that i would also have explained this muscle when i was explaining the axilla but because of ease of visibility when we are going for the dissection we see the serratus anterior muscle laterally uh, uh, in the axilla actually it forms the medial border for the axillary region but we see on the lateral aspect of the pectoral region so we will uh, in the pectoral uh, in the let's lateral to the pectoralis region so we will go with serratus anterior muscle discussion here itself now see here let me firstly explain the origin insertion with the help of this diagram so as i told you the origin of pectora the origin of serratus anterior muscle will be in the form of 8 and 9 ribs will be in the form of 8 and 9 ribs okay 8 and 9 ribs okay so it originates from the 8 uh, as arises as a series of eight or nine digitations from the upper eight or nine ribs so it is arising from so here itself i can write its origin it arises from upper eight or nine ribs as shown in the diagram and it inserts into the medial border of scapula actually it inserts onto the costal surface medial border of the scapula okay so it arises so when we are talking about digitations its first digitation can arise from first and second rib and corresponding digitations will arise from the corresponding ribs and inserts onto the costal surface of the scapula to be more specific onto the medial border this is about origin insertion please write it and then we will proceed origin arises by a series of eight digitations from upper eight ribs normally what happens the first digit arise from the first rib or also from the second rib whereas other digitations arises from corresponding ribs corresponding ribs so this is about the origin let's move on to the insertion what i told you about the insertion so uh, when we are talking about the insertion the insertion was 
the insertion yeah are you understanding any doubt you can write it so when we are talking about insertion what i told you it inserts onto the costal it inserts onto the costal aspect of the scapula in its medial border so write it insertion inserts into costal surface of scapula costal surface of scapula along the medial border along the medial border now first two digitations first two digitations is inserting corresponding to the level of superior angle of scapula next two digitations next two digitations will be inserting into the medial border of scapula and lower four or five digitations will insert into the inferior angle of scapula so this is how the insertion occurs so what is next very important for you to know is the action and the nerve supply of serratus anterior muscle because a important clinical uh, aspect is related to this topic so let's talk about that nerve supply nerve supply the nerve supply of serratus anterior muscle is by long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve C5 C6 and C7 is the root value it is a branch from the root of brachial plexus which is also called as bell's nerve the other name is bell's nerve or nerve to serratus anterior all are same it is also called as nerve to serratus anterior muscle next important point which is important for us to know is to know the action of serratus anterior muscle action of serratus anterior muscle so in the pectoralis minor part also i told you uh, that uh, pectoralis minor muscle along with serratus anterior muscle is uh, is uh, required for forward uh, pushing of the scapula okay forward movement of the scapula pulling the scapula forward and when we pull the scapula forward like this so this is forward pulling so this action is done by serratus anterior muscle that is called as protraction action protraction action is the action which is required by boxers while boxing so this is also called as boxers muscle so write down it is a powerful protractor of scapula it is a powerful protractor of the scapula it is a powerful protractor of scapula that is it pulls the for, it pulls the scapula forward what that that means that means pulls the scapula forward and this is the action which is required for boxing so it is called as boxer's muscle this is the reason it is also called as boxer's muscle serratus anterior muscle is also called as boxer's muscle now so this is about the first action let's move on with the next action second the other action is it is also attached to the medial border costal aspect of the scapula so it keeps the medial border which is also called as the vertebral border of scapula in firm opposition of chest it keeps the medial border of scapula which is also called as the vertebral border of scapula in opposition to to chest wall this is the second action okay now moving on to further so this is the second action now moving on to the third action actually one of the important action of serratus anterior muscle is 
when serratus anterior muscle acts along with trapezius muscle so actually when we are talking about lower fibers of serratus anterior muscle along with trapezius muscle so it is one of the muscle of the back superficial muscle of the back it is called it is causing overhead abduction of the arm so what it does when it is acting along with trapezius muscle which is one of the muscle of the back superficial muscle it rotates the scapula it causes it rotates the scapula laterally upwards laterally upwards and what is this action when it is rotating the scapula laterally upward that means it is involved in which action it is causing overhead abduction of arm it is involved in overhead abduction of shoulder joint or arm so these are three actions of these are three actions of serratus anterior muscle done now so the same thing so we have done with this now we have done with this now let's uh, see this in large image here so here again you can see this is clearly showing you the better view of serratus anterior muscle so these are digitations of the serratus anterior muscle so see here first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eight digitations inserting here into the scapula so this is showing the digitations of the serratus anterior muscle and going towards the scapula now let's talk about uh, the cadaveric image and so you uh, so i also want to explain the uh, clinical anatomy before that i just want to show you this cadaveric image actually uh, here on the uh in the axilla medial aspect these muscles which you are seeing these muscles which you are seeing here these are the fibers of serratus anterior muscle it is serratus anterior muscle is forming medial boundary of scapula and its innervation is by its it is innervated by which nerve it is innervated by long thoracic nerve what is the innervation it is getting innervation this nerve which is running over this serratus anterior muscle this is ltn that is long thoracic nerve giving innervation to serratus anterior muscle done now now let's talk about clinical anatomy of the serratus anterior muscle winging of scapula we will talk about winging of scapula my dear aspirants uh, uh, what you can see actually when we are talking about the action of serratus anterior muscle we were seeing that the serratus anterior muscle is keeping the medial border of scapula towards the chest wall but if it is injured by injury to long thoracic nerve which is the nerve supply of serratus anterior muscle the medial border of scapula is not kept against the chest wall so what will happen when you ask the person to push against the wall then there will be prominence of medial border of the scapula so here this is medial border of scapula is prominent and it is appearing like wings of scapula wings of scapula so it is called as winging of scapula so in case of injury to serratus anterior muscle the clinical condition which is seen is called as winging of scapula so write down in case of injury to long thoracic nerve so my dear aspirants long thoracic nerve is basically injured when there is a operations like um, mastectomy is performed actually uh, removal of breast stroma so generally what happen when breast tumors or lymph nodes are removed or lymph nodes are removed in that case also there can be a chance of injury to long thoracic nerve and when it is injured it will lead to paralysis of serratus anterior muscle serratus anterior muscle is uh, is uh, paralyzed what will be the resultant just opposite to action so abhi kya hoga the resultant will be just opposite to action that means protraction of scapula is weakened protraction of scapula is weakened other than that inferior angle of scapula is also unduly prominent prominent leading to winging of scapula leading to a condition called as winging of scapula overhead abduction is lost overhead abduction 
is lost. Got it? These are the clinical uh, uh, resultant of injury of long thoracic nerve. These are the presentation of the patient which will be seen in case of injury to long thoracic nerve. So with this we have finished with the pectoral region muscles. We have completed with the four muscle in this category. We have seen the origin insertion of pectoralis, major muscle, minor muscle. Uh, we have seen uh, the uh, subclavus muscle, serratus anterior muscle. We have seen the cadaveric images. We are knowing the attachment, nerve supply, action and clinical anatomy. Let's also talk about one more important topic in this category that is clavi pectoral fascia. So if you remember, I have also taken a class of deep fascia. So clavi pectoral fascia is a strong fascicle sheath and the location of clavi pectoral fascia. So the word with which it is related, can you see here? Clavicle and pectoral muscle. So actually the location of clavi pectoral fascia is lying deep to clavicular head of pectoralis major muscle. Actually, it is filling the gap or the space between clavicle and that of pectoralis minor muscle. So, please write down the definition of clavipectoral fascia. It is a strong fascicle sheet. It is a strong fascicle sheet deep to clavicular head of pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major muscle filling the gap between the clavicle and pectoralis minor muscle it is filling the gap between the clavicle and pectoralis minor muscle the important uh, important is to understand the extent and then we will also see the structures piercing clavipectoral fascia so firstly let me explain the extent of clavipectoral fascia we have got two diagrams and here i want to extend, explain the extent of clavipectoral fascia in this longitudinal section so i would like just like to enlarge this diagram is it okay yeah okay now in this diagram uh, let's talk about vertical extension so it uh, this uh, first thing is that you have to know which is the pectoralis major muscle so this muscle which i am highlighting here is the pectoral this is a vertical section which has been taken to demonstrate the extent so we have longitudinally cut to help you to understand the extent of clavipectoral fascia so see here the muscle which i, I have highlighted here this is the pectoralis major muscle just deep to uh, pectoralis major muscle is the pectoralis minor muscle and inferior to clavicle we have seen the subclavius muscle. So these three muscles which we are just now we have finished the topic of these three muscles pectoralis major minor and that of subclavius muscle. Now my dear aspirants uh, the pectoralis major muscle will be covered by the pectoral fascia and just deep to it we have got clavipectoral fascia so this pectoralis muscle is also covered pectoralis major muscle is also covered by this uh, green color fascia pectoral fascia and just deep to it is the location of clavipectoral fascia so you see here i am just highlighting with light green color the clavipectoral fascia so see here so now let's talk about the extent clavipectoral fascia is vertically extending from clavicle so what is this this bone which you are seeing here let me use uh, this bone which you are seeing is the clavicle i am using gray color to make you understand the clavicle so here longitudinally the clavicle is also cut so this is the clavicle bone and just below the clavicle bone the clavipectoral fascia is extending below and it is enclosing a small muscle lying below the clavicle and just now we have studied that subclavius muscle is lying below the clavicle okay so Clavipectoral fascia is enclosing the subclavius muscle, which is clear in this diagram. Okay, so in this category, what I want to tell that clavipectoral fascia will have an anterior part, will have a posterior lamina. Anterior part is actually the continuation of deep cervical fascia of the neck. Posterior lamina will, uh, if we talk about posterior lamina, it becomes uh, 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 the, okay, so if it go uh, anterior and posterior once more so we have got two laminas anterior and posterior the posterior lamina is continuation with the neck fascia and anterior lamina will be covering the clavicle so you can say it is just splitting into two laminas to enclose a muscle small muscle that is subclavius muscle 
lower down it again after enclosing the subclavius muscle it joins to form one layer and again lower down it is enclosing another muscle so it is enclosing another muscle and this muscle is this muscle is the pectoralis minor muscle lower down after enclosing pectoralis minor muscle it is merging with the it is merging with the axillary fascia or the dome of the axillary fascia or axillary fascia lower down so this is the whole extent of clavipectoral fascia in the longitudinal or vertical extent you can say so got it that means it is enclosing two muscles that means clavipectoral fascia is enclosing two muscle which two muscle it is enclosing it is enclosing subclavius muscle and it is enclosing pectoralis minor muscle and it is lying below which muscle it is lying below pectoralis major muscle so please let me know uh, kartik priyanshu Ad adhar is it okay are you understanding any doubt clavipectoral fascia is continuation from the deep fascia investing layer of deep fascia which is a uh, fascia in the neck region lower down uh, it is attaching to the clavicle and it is enclosing the subclavius muscle fuses to form one layer then again encloses the pectoralis minor muscle lower down it fuses with the axillary fascia okay so this is the whole extent after so this is also here also you can see in this diagram here this whole extent which you are seeing this whole extent which you are seeing this i will use green color so this is whole the extent of clavipectoral fascia okay that is it is uh, it is enclosing here it will enclose the subclavius muscle here it is enclosing so if you will see here it will be enclosing subclavius muscle and here it is enclosing the pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis minor and subclavius muscle got it okay so like uh, write this point and then we will move proceed so write down clavi pectoral fascia clavi pectoral fascia so vertical extension abhi hum kya baat karenge vertically extend baat karenge vertically extend ke bare mein baat karenge so vertically we talk it extends from it extends from clavicle superior to lower down to axillary fascia okay in upper part it splits in two layer it splits in two layer or you can say in two lamina layer or lamina both are similar thing only to enclose to enclose one muscle which muscle to enclose which muscle dear to enclose subclavius muscle to enclose subclavius muscle to enclose subclavius muscle so here two layers hote hain to yahan pe posterior layer and anterior layer so here what happens posterior layer will uh, which uh, actually is continuation of investing layer of deep cervical fascia which will ultimately merge with axillary sheath and uh, the lower part or anterior layer will merge with the clavicle got it lower part now if we further move this we are talking about clavicle so if further lower down the clavipectoral fascia extent it will again form a single layer and it will again split to enclose another muscle that is pectoralis minor muscle so write down lower part it splits again to enclose which muscle pectoralis it splits to enclose pectoralis minor muscle it is enclosing pectoralis minor muscle and further lower down it will merge with axillary fascia it will enclose pectoralis minor muscle and further down it will become downwards it becomes continuous with the 
axillary fascia axillary fascia or axillary sheath this is the whole extent vertical extent of clavipectoral fascia we will also talk about horizontal extent now before that once again i want to show you this diagram so let me just proceed so is it okay so see here same thing here also you can see this is the clavicle enclosing the clavipectoral fascia is enclosing the subclavis muscle then enclosing the pectoralis minor muscle so these two muscles are enclosed by it one is the subclavis muscle which is enclosed other is the pectoralis minor muscle enclosed and this hole is the extent this hole which i am showing you with the green color this hole is the clavipectoral fascia lower down it will merge with the attachment of axilla see here so this is the vertical extent this green color structure which i am showing you is the so lower down it is merging with lower down it is merging with the attachment to the axilla in this extent it is enclosing two muscles subclavis and the top pectoralis minor muscle in this extent it is also getting pierced by certain structures yahan pe we can see here one is the artery it is getting pierced by thoracoacromial artery it is getting pierced by cephalic vein lymphatics and also by one nerve the nerve is lateral pectoral nerve lateral pectoral nerve so here these structures which has been highlighted and shown you these structures are piercing it pectoralis uh, thoracoacromial artery lateral pectoral nerve and cephalic vein which has been shown other than that lymphatics is there we will come to that point also so i think this is clear now next important point is to also understand the uh uh so next important point is to understand the horizontal extent so again you see one more uh, clear simple diagram so you can see it is starting from the investing layer of deep cervical fascia continuing lower down enclosing subclavius muscle joining to form a single layer enclosing pectoralis minor muscle joining to form single layer and merging with the axillary fascia and this is the another fascia which is covering the pectoralis major so this is the clavipectoral fascia clear now abhi horizontal extent so i will tell you about horizontal extent uh, this is a diagram in which you can understand this is a schematic diagram to make you understand the horizontal extent of clavipectoral fascia so we will talk about its medial attachment and that of lateral attachment so medially clavipectoral fascia so here we are seeing the this is the clavipectoral fascia which is shown to you this is clavipectoral fascia this is whole clavipectoral fascia see here so this is the clavipectoral fascia so medially if you talk if we talk about its medial extent medial attachment so medially clavipectoral fascia is actually uh, getting merged with costoclavicular ligament medially and it is also blending with it also blends with it also blends with the external intercostal membrane of external inter costal membrane of first two rib space rib space okay thora thorax uh, class has not been done but in the we have got in between the ribs we have got intercostal space in the first two intercostal space there is external intercostal membrane so on medial aspect it is merging with on medial aspect it is merging with costoclavicular ligament and the first two intercostal space external intercostal membrane on lateral aspect it will be merging with coracoclavicular ligament so this would be the merging with coracoclavicular ligament on lateral aspect so laterally it is merging with it is blending with the coracoid process it will blend with the coracoid process and with the costo coracoclavicular ligament coracoclavicular ligament actually the upper part of thick end part of clavipectoral fascia extending from the first rib to that of coracoid process that upper part is actually forming a uh, is called as costo coracoid ligament so that is the part of clavipectoral fascia so we will write this and then we will proceed so write down medially clavipectoral fascia is attached to 
first rib it is attached to the first rib and to costoclavicular ligament first rib may attach hai costoclavicular ligament may attach hai and the third is blending with external intercostal membrane of first two spaces so blends with external intercostal membrane of first two intercostal space done this is what this is the medial extent this is all about the medial extent of clavi pectoral fascia now let's talk about the lateral extent or lateral blending so let's talk about lateral so write down laterally clavi pectoral fascia is attached to which part of the scapula laterally it is attached to coracoid process of scapula coracoid process of scapula and blends with and blends with costo okay it is blending with the costo clavicular ligament coraco clavicular ligament also coraco clavicular ligament it blends with uh, costo clavicular uh, it blends with coraco clavicular ligament blends with coraco clavicular ligament now one of the point is very much this was about the attachment laterally and medially medially costo clavicular laterally coraco clavicular ligament now one of the important point is which has been asked also in your uh, competitive exam that is the uh, clavi pectoral fascia derived part so one of the important part is the thick upper part the thick upper part of this clavi pectoral fascia which is extending from which is extending from the level of first rib to coracoid process from the level of first rib to the coracoid process is called as costo coracoid ligament it's called as costo coracoid ligament so you can say costo coracoid ligament is derived part of clavi pectoral fascia s verma welcome to the session dear welcome to the session dear okay any doubt please ask me are you, are you understanding this session or not i am explaining and writing the things also so that you can have a better uh, clear uh, um, uh, concepts being cleared okay so done with this so we have done with this next very important point is to know the structures piercing clavi pectoral fascia if you remember one of the diagram i have shown you there i have shown you the nerves and the vessels piercing it so this is another schematic diagram so actually four structures are piercing this can be asked as an enumeration question or an mcq four structures pierces clavi pectoral fascia one is the cephalic vein this is the vein one is the nerve lateral pectoral nerve one is the artery thoraco acromial artery and the fourth is the lymphatics okay four structures is piercing clavi pectoral fascia so i think one more diagram i want to show you for this see here if i highlight this diagram so what you can see in this diagram you can see the artery piercing so this is the artery which you can see piercing clavi pectoral fascia you can see the vein so artery piercing is okay the artery piercing is thoraco acromial artery the vein piercing will be shown this is the vein which is piercing cephalic vein and also the nerve a small yellow color nerve which is lying very close can you see here this is the this is the lateral pectoral nerve so vein Uh, so can you see blue color is the cephalic vein red color is the thoraco acromial artery yellow color is the lateral pectoral nerve lymphatics has not been shown so four structure lymphatics is also piercing clavi pectoral fascia so write it structures piercing 
clavi pectoral fascia structures piercing clavi pectoral fascia the structures piercing clavi pectoral fascia is following lateral pectoral nerve lateral pectoral nerve we have got thoracoacromial artery we have got cephalic vein and lymphatics of breast lymphatics of breast to apical group of axillary lymph node to apical group of axillary lymph node actually uh, what is important to mark here if we are talking about the four structures that is the structures piercing clavi pectoral fascia if we talk about the structures piercing it is important to know okay so yes i will let you know actually i will share the pdfs and all we will have so soon we are coming up with the another in the month of feb we are coming like a, there is one more uh, uh, chance of communication that i will take a session of uh, 40 45 minutes or 1 hour and then 15 minutes we can directly talk to each other on the anacademy app so directly you can talk to uh, me and you can uh, ask your doubts and get it cleared so always i will proceed like for example i will take a session then 10 minutes or 15 minutes will meet on the anacademy app there you can uh, you can uh, direct have a conversation you can talk to me and you can ask your doubts and also there is another point where in the, where i will share the pdf okay there you can download the pdf and you will have other important point is that you can come to the anacademy platform where you will get the pdf actually on the plus platform each and every notes you will be provided after the completion of the session special classes also it is there so soon it is coming up i will share all the details about that don't worry okay firstly understand the thing don't worry we will have that notes also don't worry so yes now uh, in this category so i just want to uh, write in this category thoracoacromial artery and lateral pectoral nerve so these two structures these two structures these two structure that is the nerve and artery passes outwards these two structures are passing outwards from means pectoral fascia they are piercing clavi pectoral fascia and coming out okay if this is membranous structure so if it is having four uh, gaps or four penetration two structures are coming out and two structures are going inside okay and here the cephalic vein and that of lymphatics these two structures these two structures are passing passes inwards by piercing clavi pectoral fascia so this is also important if i am talking that this clavi pectoral fascia is a membranous like structure which is having piercing of four structure in this category two structures will move inside the structures which which is penetrating and moving inside in the clavi pectoral region from clavi pectoral region uh, is cephalic vein and lymphatics going towards the apical part of axillary lymph node the structures which is penetrating and coming out sprouting out from clavi pectoral fascia is the nerve lateral pectoral nerve and the artery thoracoacromial artery okay so is it clear okay okay don't worry about this we will soon be connected on uh, on uh, communication directly so you can directly talk to me on phone it's not phone it's an app through an app anacademy app so all these things we are upgrading the system of anacademy that we could have one to one communication because it is known that for every session uh, it can't be possible that you will not have uh, doubts or you can give your suggestions to me also so sometimes it doesn't feel nice to write uh, there to directly you can communicate me so i will uh, end the session and we will get connected on the anacademy app you can talk to me so these all things are coming in the month of feb please wait for few days my dear aspirants don't worry okay okay 
so uh, like thoracoacromial artery is the branch of axillary artery lateral pectoral nerve is a branch of lateral cord brachial plexus so let me not proceed much detail because we will come with the upcoming session but before ending the session certain important points i want to tell the one of the important point which i want you to tell is that high yield anatomy mcqs of neat pg 2022 examination so high yield anatomy mcqs of neat pg 2022 examination targeting neat pg will be taken on sunday by me the two special classes free platform of anacademy that is 1 pm and 2 pm so do join my dear aspirants do join for this session if you are watching the session for the first time what you can do you can un, you can uh, download the anacademy app you can find your goal as neat pg okay you have to type as neat pg your goal then you can search for dr mona lisa free session or via link which is provided in let's crack neat pg telegram group future doctor telegram group always i share the link and creative of my session so via that you can come to my session live you can ask the doubts live in the session and i will rectify clear it don't worry so we will have communication there also the entire free test calendar has been shown to you you can be present for these free test you can use the code anat10 to be present in this free test this will be highly beneficial also my dear aspirants before ending the session certain good news to you the news is that uh, republic day special offer is going on that means an academy has got 6 month free extension so if you are wanting the subscription of an academy and you are planning to take it this is the right time so you take the subscription because the opportunity is valid till today that is 27th jan you will get 6 month of free extension this will be uh, this will be applicable in one year or above plus subscription you can use my code anat10 and get an extra discount of 10% so just grab this opportunity if you are planning you just go for it I would also like to have a comparison of Plus and Iconic subscription. So see this slide where the comparison of Plus and Iconic has been done, as you can see here. This will help you to uh, target which uh, subscription you ha you have to take. Actually, the student of first year should definitely go for three four years of subscription because in comprehensive Plus course, their whole course will be covered in a very systematic way in all the subjects. You will clear your university exam with a Uh, with good marks with uh, and you will secure a very good marks in your viva practical and uni university exam you will get honors and thereafter you can also complete your competitive exam of next so you can plan like this if you want an extra discount of 10% use my code and at 10 so let's meet with the upcoming session thank you all the best keep studying so my dear aspirants again i will meet meet up with the upcoming sessions all the best any doubt so yes i am ending the session today is it okay all the best dear all the best my dear aspirants okay so i am just ending the session okay thank you have you understood the session now thank you okay